this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Welcome to another painting demo. And today I want to today I want to share with you the process of this painting of Corona del Mar rocks. So this painting was painted a couple of weeks ago, and the source photo was taken by me during my winter vacation at California. So we were expecting a nice, bright, sunny Southern California weather. Instead, we got a lot of rain and cloudy days during my time there. It was a little bit disappointing, but I feel like a cloudy overcast day in the beach does has its own charm. While it is not bright and sunny, I get to appreciate a lot of the subtle details because there's no overpowering sun. So I decided to paint this photo because I really like the shape of the rock and I like the reflection on the wet sand. And I just really like the quiet mood of the scene. So I start off with a line drawing as always. The main purpose is just to get a size and placement of all the rocks. There's an incredible amount of details inside of the rock, but I am not going to draw them all. The important part of the drawing is just to get the size and placement. And if you're able to, you can articulate. And if you're able to, you can articulate a silhouette a little bit. Other than that, I just make some indication of some big shape within the rock. I will interpret the details with my paintbrush later on. Doing nature scene is always this humbling experience to me because just imagine these sceneries, they were there way before me and they will continue to be there after me. So in a way, I'm only capturing like this micro tiny little fraction of its lifespan. So it's very, very humbling. For the first wash, I pre-wetted the sky because I want those soft but thick volumetric looking cloud in the sky. There's no defined edges in the sky because we don't really see a blue sky. So most of the shape are going to be soft shapes as long as we can interpret the sense of volume in the sky in these clouds, we should be good. And because we're doing this wet on too wet, the paper is now quite moist. So my mixture needs to be thick enough. If your mixture is too thin, too watery, then you are not able to see a defined soft shape that we're seeing here. So keep it loose. Don't try too hard to define those clouds. As much as you want to create this beautiful looking cloud, keep in mind that these are the background. You don't want them to be too prominent. If your main character, if your main focus of the painting are clouds, then everything else needs to be very, very simple. Since the focus of this painting is the big rock on the left, keep the background loose and simple so that we can establish the depths and help the viewers to focus on the detail we want them to focus on. So don't lose the sight of the big picture when you are starting to paint a separate part of the painting. Now I believe there is enough cloud in the sky, so it's time to continue the wash down and start to paint the ocean. The ocean is rather dull. There's not a lot of color with the ocean at all because it is a cloudy day. We don't have a bright blue sky to influence the color of the ocean. So I'm just using a very grayish looking turquoise color for the ocean and leave out a little bit of white to suggest there's foam. And now I'm starting to mix the color for the rock on the left. I want to go for something a little bit closer to the middle value since there is no highlight on this rock. With a bigger wash like these, it's always better to use a bigger brush. So I'm using a medium sized mop brush. It has enough paint and water and that will allow me to do bigger brush strokes and create a big clean wash. Once again, the unedited, non sped up version of this painting is available for my Patreons. So if you haven't checked out my Patreon, I highly recommend that you check it out. You can access all of the previous recorded live demo. You are also able to help and support this channel as well. So as you can see, I got a pretty big shape going on. And now is a good time for me to do some wet on to wet and start to putting some darker values and different colors on it 
just to make it look a little bit more rich. Because if you really look into it, you will see different tones of color. They are not just brown dirt color. They are a little bit of the green shade. There is some dirt color that looks a little bit warmer. There is some color that looks a little bit cooler. But they are all within the same range of this brown color. So by shifting the balance of warm and cool, I will be able to create different colors, different variety of the same color so that it looks more rich and a little bit more interesting. And as the wash is slowly starting to dry, I start to mix thicker and thicker paint and starting to darken things up a little bit. Because the lack of a strong light source, we don't really have that huge sharp contrast between light and dark. So I try to do most of it during wet onto wet stage. So all the detail looks a lot more subtle and they blend in with each other a lot better. Because we see so many details in the photo, it's very easy to get carried away. During the painting, during this painting, I actually got a little bit carried away as well because looking at all these beautiful details, I wanted to capture them all. But sometimes we forget that the viewers only sees your painting unless you show them the original photo, which we rarely do. I show you the photo just because for teaching purposes. But when you are in the gallery, when you are in the art show, you rarely see the photo reference. You just see the painting itself. So our goal is to create the best experience possible with our painting, not trying to copy the photo. That's why you should always focus on the big picture, trying to deliver that experience. Now I continue the wash down and I leave out the wet sand so I can paint those separately. So I start off by adding some dark for the reflection of the rock on the wet sand. And these reflections are very, very soft because those water on the wet sand is very still. So it's almost like a mirror. In this part, you want to paint it a little bit faster because you want to maintain the cleanness of the wash. If you slow down too much because you want to capture the details, you are risking your wash to become dirty because some part of your wash might starting to dry already. And now I use a big brush and connect the reflection of the rock to the reflection of the sky on the west end. And it's very important to understand that the reflection of the sky is actually not that bright on the west end. So don't leave it white. Give it a certain amount of value. I only leave white on the edges because that's where the foam is. I want to have the foam edge so that it feels like very shallow water on the sand. We continue to build up the reflection of the rock. And now I started to mix a darker value and I start by painting the rock on the right. If you look at the photo, that is pretty much a very dark shape. So that's what I'm trying to do as well. I am not looking to get into the detail for that distant rock, but the value is much more important. And once I put down this dark value, I immediately able to see how much lighter it is in my main rock on the left. So once I hit that dark value, I have I now have a reference of how dark I should go. Continue to paint the smaller rocks in the distance. Pay attention to the size and the placement of these rocks and make sure the bottoms are mostly flat. That will give the sense of depth. So now I painted a little bit of the reflection and some details. But at this stage, I know that I have to go back into my main rock and darken quite a few things. The ocean water is also very complex if you look at the photo. But again, I try to simplify them by just add a little bit of a reflection of the rock, try to skip around a little bit and hint some foams. And that's pretty much all I really need. Again, we are here to create a viewing experience. We're not trying to replicate the photograph. This is why a lot of time people can tell the difference between painting from a photo and painting from plein air, from real life. Because in real life, things will keep moving. 
the ocean will keep moving and even the lighting will change. So when you are painting plein air, you have to capture the essence of the scene without trying to paint every little detail you see. Especially things like moving water, it is impossible to capture the detail on those waters because they are constantly moving. So it's really depending on your understanding of the subject and how you interpret it with your visual language. Now I'm adding some more dark to the side of the rock and the bottom of the rock. And now the rocks start to look a lot more solid. That being said, now there's a little bit too much contrast between the light part of the rock and the dark part of the rock. And we need to sort of bridge the gap between the two. So as I continue to work on this rock, I also need to put in some transition tone between the dark and the light. I also try to connect the dark shape as well. So some of the rock bed on the bottom, I try to connect that to the rock itself. And again, even though it is not a sunny day at the beach, I appreciate to discover the beauty of the rock and the nature under a different weather. So this is something that I encourage my student to do. When you are at a location, you are looking at a scenery that you're interested to paint, try to move around a little bit, try to find a better angle. And if you can come back under a different lighting or even a different season, things can look drastically different. And something that looks boring at the first glance can look extraordinary under a different lighting or a different season. You never know. In this case, I won't be able to go back anytime soon, but I make the most out of the day that I was there. Even though it's an overcast day, I get to see all this beautiful shape and details on this rock. And that is something that I want to interpret in my painting. And as you can see, I unify the rock with some bigger brush strokes, trying to get rid of some of the detail to avoid it being overworked. And now I add a little bit more darker reflection under the rock. So the value will match a little bit better. Darken the sand underneath the rock. We don't need that big of a contrast down there. And now I just give the sand a tiny little bit of details. There are footprints, there's seaweed, there's some random stuff on the sand. It's not perfectly flat. Just a little hints of detail though. There's no need to overwork on that. Continue to push the dark, add a little bit more. When you're doing wet onto wet, when it's dry, it usually will lighten up a little bit. So sometimes you need to go back in and add more paint to compensate this nature of watercolor. I hope you're doing well. We are in a very uncertain and trying time right now. I know for many people, things are very, very tough in the recent years through the pandemic and now there's a war going on. I know I'm just one person, so what I can do is very, very limited. I just wish my painting and my videos can give you a little bit sense of peace and joy. Here is the finished painting. I come back in after it's dry and paint some darker shape with big brush so that it unify the whole look a little bit better. I hope you enjoy this painting and this demo, and I hope you well wherever you are. I am Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.